हेलो एंड वेलकम यू ऑल डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे टॉपिक इज ग्राउंड रिफ्लेक्शन मॉडल दिस इज द टॉपिक फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट सेल्युलर नेटवर्क फॉर थर्ड इयर ई एन टी सी स्टूडेंट्स अर्लियर आई हैव कवर्ड फ्यू टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू दिस यूनिट सो नेक्स्ट इज ग्राउंड रिफ्लेक्शन मॉडल वॉट आर दिस डिफरेंट मॉडल्स इन केस ऑफ मोबाइल कम्युनिकेशन अदर इन केस ऑफ सेल्युलर नेटवर्क there are two major parts one is base station and another is your handset or mobile receiver which is receiving the signals now in between there are many kinds of losses taking place when the signal reaches at the receiving end that is at the mobile so to predict different different kinds of losses a uh, various mathematical models are developed one of the models is ground reflection model it is also known as two ray model because in this model for the prediction mainly two types of rays two types of waves are used so this is also called two ray model now what is this a uh, basic concept i have considered a ground surface actually surface of earth is not a flat it is a curvature it is having some kind of curvature for the simplicity in this model it is assumed that the surface of earth is a flat it is shown by this horizontal line now this is the base station base station is the part which is responsible for transmitting the signals so this is the base station whose height is denoted by ht h is the height t stands for transmitting side so ht can be treated as height of transmitting antenna and everyone is aware the height of base station is much larger in order to provide the signal propagation for the longer distances now in this model there are two types of rays which are covered which are considered first consider this ray shown by this blue ink uh, shown by this line here i have written d l o s the term l o s stands for line of sight what is this line of sight this is the general word from physics line of sight means if there is a direct transmission from say transmitting antenna or base station towards the mobile mobile is acting as a receiver so this if this kind of transmission is there then it is known as the line of sight transmission and this distance is denoted by line of sight distance the actually flat distance this is not a flat line actually flat distance or horizontal distance from transmitting antenna up to the mobile or base station up to the mobile is denoted by notation d so as i said dlos is a direct transmission from base station to the mobile there is one more ray which i have shown in this diagram the ray is like this the base station generates the signal and it reaches towards the ground it makes an angle theta i theta i has usual meaning angle of incidence it causes reflection from the ground surface it is getting reflected by an angle theta r and ideally according to the optics we know that theta i is equals to theta r so theta r is angle of reflection this reflected wave is having electric field intensity which is denoted by eg electric field intensity of ground waves what is a ground wave ground wave is the wave which is transmitted from the base station reaches up to the ground surface gets reflected and then passes towards the receiver which is a mobile handset in this case now in case of a mobile the receiving antenna receives the signal the height of receiving antenna with respect to the ground level is denoted by hr again same analogy h stands for height r for stands for receiving antenna so hr is height of receiving antenna elos is electric field intensity for the line of sight communication that means for the direct communication the total electric field that is e t o t t o t stands for total total electric field is addition of these two that is e l o s plus e g now the power is related to the distance direct distance or horizontal distance between uh, base station and mobile by the equation p uh, total that is the total po received power is directly proportional to 1 by d raised to n that means inversely proportional to d raised to n 
if you are using two ray model then in this case n is equals to 2 there are in uh, other models also for that the value of n varies so to make the thing simple the total power is inversely proportional to the distance d distance d is the distance between base station and mobile so as the distance increases the received power goes on reducing now this is the important formula which gives the power loss pl power loss in terms of uh, db which is 40 40 log d minus 10 log gt g stands for gain gt stands for gain of transmitting antenna plus 10 log gr gr stands for gain of receiving antenna plus 20 log ht ht is height of transmitting antenna plus 20 log hr and hr is the height of receiving antenna now let us solve few numericals related to this part the first problem is check whether two ray model is applicable or not and two cases are given i will tell you one simple and important condition how to check whether the two ray model is applicable or not remember the formula the distance d what's distance d it is a horizontal distance between base station and receiver mobile if it is greater than 10 times ht plus hr then and then only the two ray model is applicable so first case uh, we want d should be greater than 10 times ht plus hr let us calculate 10 into ht plus hr for the first case so it is 10 into ht is 35 meters plus hr is 3 meters so it is 380 meters given distance is 250 meters so you can write the answer like this since d is not greater than or less than d is less than in this case d is less than 10 times ht plus hr this particular model that is two ray model is not applicable same logic you need to apply for the second part again calculate the value 10 into ht plus hr so it gives us 10 in the bracket 30 plus 1.5 that is 315 given distance is 450 we have to check it for a distance of 450 whether this model is applicable or not so distance d is greater than 10 times this value 10 times ht plus hr that means this value 450 is greater than 315 so in this case the two-way model is applicable it can be asked as uh, one part of the lengthy numerical so uh, you just have to check this condition if this condition is applicable then quite clear the two-ray model is applicable <clears throat> the next problem is a mobile is located five kilometers from the base station so distance d is given as five kilometers so d is equals to five kilometers that means five thousand meters from the base station b h stands for base station and uses an antenna with gain 2.55 db this is the gain of transmitting antenna which is gt that is given as 2.55 db e field at one kilometer now uh, don't get confused d is the total distance at any other distance uh, between transmitter and receiver that is denoted by d0 d is the total distance of mobile handset from the base station at any other distance in between whatever distance it is it is denoted by d0 so d0 is one kilometer that is 1000 meters e field at one kilometer this distance is d0 and this particular field is denoted by e0 e is the total field at the mobile handset E0 is any field in between the base station and mobile. So uh, it is given as 10 raised to minus 3 holds per meter. The carrier frequency, which is simple notation F, is 900 megahertz. So it is simply 900 into 10 raised to 6 hertz. Find E field at the mobile. That means you need to calculate electric field intensity at the mobile. That is at the distance 5 kilometers total distance. Given HT is height of transmitting antenna is 50 meters. Height of receiving antenna HR is 1.5 meters. These values are directly given in the question. 
First and foremost requirement is in all numericals, first you need to check whether this condition is satisfied or not. Uh, we need to calculate like the last numerical, we need to calculate value of 10 into HT plus HR. So it gives 10 into HT is 50 plus 1.5, which is 515. Uh, this value is 515 and given distance D is 5000. So 5000 is much larger than 515. So you need to write the comment that two ray model is applicable. Suppose at this stage itself, this condition is not valid, then you can directly write for this particular case, two ray model is not at all applicable. Okay, if this is applicable, then do remember the standard formula. Uh, you, you just have to memorize this formula. ERD that is received electric field at some distance D is 2E0 D0 upon D. D is the total distance in 2. 2 pi HTHR upon lambda D. Lambda is the wavelength. First calculate the wavelength using the standard formula. Wavelength is C by F. C is the speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Uh, standard value F is the frequency which is given in the question. 900 into 10 raised to 6. So if you solve this, you will get this value as 1 by 3 or 0.33. So just put the values in this formula. ER of D is equals to 2 into E0. Value of E0 is given in the question. It is 10 raised to minus 3 into D0. D0 is 1 kilometer. That is 1000 meters upon D, D is 5000 into 2 pi into HT 50 meters into HR 1.5 meters divided by lambda just now we have calculated 1 by 3 lambda is the wavelength into D, D is 5000. So very simple numerical you just have to memorize one formula but before that you need to check this condition. If you solve this on the calculator this answer will be 113 point zero nine into 10 raised to minus six and since it is basically electric field intensity its unit is hold per meter or simply 113.09 micro holds per meter the next numerical is a receiver is located at 10 kilometers so this distance d is given as 10 kilometers that is 10 into 10 raised to 3 meters 10,000 meters from 50 watt transmitter. Now this is the transmitted power. P stands for power. Suffix T stands for transmitted power which is given as 50 watt. The carrier frequency that is F is 1900 megahertz. So 1900 into 10 raised to 6 hertz. GT is gain of transmitting antenna. GR is gain of receiving antenna. These values are directly given. GR 1 GT Two, find first part received power, second part magnitude of electric field at the receiver, assume HT, this, this part is also given in the question, HT, that is height of transmitting antenna 50 meters, height of receiving antenna 1.5 uh, meters. Now, you just have to remember three equations. Uh, the earlier one, which we used in last numerical, that is calculation of electric field, and the, these two equations, you will be in a position to solve any numericals as far as this two-ray model uh, is concerned. Now, before starting the numerical, as we discussed in the last sum, you need to check the condition where whether D is greater than 10 times HT plus HR. So, looking at the numerical itself, we can easily predict HT is uh, 50, HR is uh, 1.5. So, 50 1.5 into 10, 515 and uh, distance is given as 10,000. So, 10,000 is much less, uh, greater than uh, 515 meters. So, two ray model is applicable. All right. Now, we have to make use of this formula for the first part to calculate the received power. P stands for power, suffix R indicates the received power. In this formula, I need value of lambda. We know that lambda is the wavelength like last sum calculated using standard formula. C by F. C is the speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. F is given in the question 1900 into 10 raised to 6. So if you calculate the lambda, its answer is 0.157. Its wavelength, so its unit is meters. 
Now simply we will put the values in the first formula. Say this is first formula, this is second formula. In the first formula that is PR is equals to value of PT transmitted power is 50 watt. So it is 50 into GT is 1 into GR is 2. Directly these values are given into lambda square that is 0.157 bracket square upon 4 pi square d square. Distance d is 10 into 10 raised to 3 bracket square. So if you solve this on the calculator, this answer will be 1.56 into 10 raised to minus 10. But since it is the power, you need to express it in terms of dB. So if you just calculate 10 log of this uh, calculated value, 10 log of this value, the answer will be minus 98.06 dB decibels. Now this is the first part. For the second part, we have this formula and it, it is asked to calculate the magnitude of electric field. So making use of this formula, I need to calculate the magnitude of electric field. Let me first rearrange the equation. Before that, in this equation, you might feel one term is unknown. That is this term eta. Eta is known as intrinsic impedance of the free space. Rather, in simple language, internal impedance of free space. And the standard value of eta is 377 ohms or you can well write it as 120 pi, one and the same thing. So from this equation, I need to calculate value of uh, uh, mod of E because this is the equation for power. Earlier also we have used this equation, which was again equation of power and we have got this answer. This is the answer of power. So let us rearrange the terms. So I can write it like this, mod of E square is equals to PR into eta into four pi upon gr into lambda square so simply e is equals to square root i will write it over here mod of e is square root of this terms so very simple calculation put the value of pr pr is just now we have calculated this value put the value of eta eta is 120 pi or 377 ohms into 4 pi upon gr value of gr is given in the question lambda just now we have calculated so if you simplify it on the calculator answer will be E or rather mod of E is equals to 3.87 milliwatt per meter. So this is the final answer that is magnitude of electric field intensity. Dear students, uh, I have covered all the types of variations as far as this two ray model or ground wave or reflection model uh, for mobile communication is concerned. So that's it for today's session. Thank you. Thanks a lot.